Shalom. My name is Yair Davidi. I'm speaking to you from the State of Israel. We're giving news and views and also updates on certain matters of research that involve us. My organization is uh, Hebrew Nations, Brit Am, and we research the whereabouts of the Lost Ten Tribes, and we also publish uh, information concerning the Lost Ten Tribes, and we work towards reconciliation between uh, Judah, and that is the Jewish people, and the Lost Ten Tribes in the West. Uh, president, this present uh, talk is giving a summary of recent news uh, that things that happened or opinions that have been stated that are worth uh, taking notice of and uh, also other matters in, uh, in research in general. Uh, so this is what we have. This is the second, this is the second uh, clip of judicial news that has been put out. We hope you enjoy it and benefit from it. Because for us it is something of an experiment, we're not certain how these things will go. So we have, uh, first of all, the uh, head of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, has threatened the West with nuclear war. Uh, Putin claims that the eastern section of the Ukraine should, in effect, belong to Russia. And uh, he may have designs on the western section of the Ukraine as well because uh, from a geopolitical point of view, Russia needs that area, or historically has always had control of that area, and it is uh, important for uh, Russia's global uh, si uh, situation. At all events, uh, the West is, uh, is um, encouraging Ukrainian resistance in this, in this ma in this, uh, is on this issue. The West is encouraging Ukrainian resistance on this issue and also threatening or making noises in his direction concerning his own actions of, uh, of arming uh, ethnic Russians in the area, or sending in troops and tanks, and possibly preparing uh, for a takeover of the region. So, Vladimir Putin has threatened the West, in effect, with nuclear war. He is reminding the West that Russia is a nuclear power, and Russia has a, has a very effective nuclear deterrence potential. An article by Ephraim Inbar, Hamas was defeated until the next time, which brings up a few points worth your note. We are speaking to you on the 3rd of December 2014. The article was written two days ago, published two days ago. This article tells us that Hamas was clearly defeated by Israel in Operation Protective Edge, but not destroyed. It also said that this destruction was not part, not a goal of Israel's military ca uh, campaign. What Israel wanted was a weakened Hamas to continue to rule Gaza. The separation between Gaza and the West Bank serves Israel's interest in weakening the Palestinian national movement, which has been and remains a mortal enemy, not a peace partner, at least for the foreseeable future. And this is correct, the whole of the uh, Palestinian political entity both Abbas and of Hamas, both in the uh, west, on the West Bank and in Gaza, they want to destroy the state of Israel. They have uh, they have issues among, amongst themselves about as to how this should be done and and what type of, inst of a society they will have or would want after this is done or doctored that or or during the course of uh, carrying out this uh, nefarious aim of theirs. But uh, they are united in this goal of destroying the State of Israel. The State of Israel must be aware of this. It knows it better than we do because the State of Israel receives ongoing intelligence information from all the sources. And it could be that the State of Israel does not want a unification between the two sections. I prefer to see a weakened Hamas in Gaza rather than, uh, than some other elements ruling there and uh, possibly uh, being able to coordinate uh, actions against us. So, uh, concerning the war and the results of the war, uh, about one third of Hamas's mil missile arsenal and most of its missile production infrastructure was destroyed. Most of the attack tunnels, 32, were possibly eliminated, demolished, and almost 1,000 Hamas fighters and a few of its leaders were eliminated, and so on. After Christopher Columbus discovered America, and the white man in 
we came to the Americas and began to settle there, large numbers of the uh, Amerindians died. They died from sicknesses that the white man brought with them, the, for which they had no resistance. They were not used to them. The, the white man in Europe had to have these sicknesses for centuries and they had uh, developed uh, in, uh, natural, inocu uh, natural immunity to these, uh, to these maladies and the Red Indian did not have uh, such, a, such an advantage so consequently large numbers of them perished. A new study indicates then it may not have been because of, only because of the white man but other factors may also have been involved. They uh, show uh, an analysis of three ancient Peruvian human skeletons that date to between uh, 1,028 CE and 1,280, another 1028 and t between 1028 and 1280, which is well before the Europeans came to America, uh, a study of the skeletons uh, showed uh, evidence of a form of tuberculosis. And this tuberculosis may have been transmitted by seals and by sea lions, and may originally have come from Africa. So this too is a possibility that the sicknesses or some of the sicknesses may have already began their actions before the white man arrived. Another point of interest is the study of what are called hippo jars. Hippo jars are a form of ceramics, big jars, big jars with narrow, with narrow openings and big fat bodies called hippo jars. These jars were used for storage and they were used for storage in the uh, ancient Israel in biblical times and uh, we, show, we see that they have been used uh, for storage in all of uh, the lands around Israel, in Moab, in, in, in Ammon, in uh, Edom, in Judea, and also in Israel. You will remember that at that time, after the death of King Solomon, the Israelite tribes split into two different sections. We had the kingdom of Israel in the north, the kingdom of Judah in the south, and that they were in effect two separate entities and at times they fought together against the common enemies and at other times they fought each other. There were, there were different, uh, different uh, entities altogether. So, we find these type of jars in, in Judah, in the south, in Israel, in the north. We also find them in Ammon, in Moab and in the Edom. They are quite common. They are often associated with administrative centers and they may have used, been used for purposes of storage and also of taxation. At that time, the local administrators would tax the people in kind, in produce. So these jars would have been used to store oil and other, and other agricultural goods that could be stored as part of their administrative activity, so a scientific analysis, which has just been, the results of which have just been published, been put out by the Hebrew University Institute of Archaeology. They did a thorough analysis of these jars and they showed that they all have been produced by the same method, probably from the same workshop or at least from the same central uh, loci of, 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 uh, of production. And according to the type of ceramic employed, they all came from the state of Israel. They all came from the kingdom of Israel. The kingdom of Israel, that, whose inhabitants later became the ten tribes of Israel, produced these jars and they exported them to the other nations around them. So that is a point of interest. Well, the significance is not certain, but it's worth noting.